Welcome to Fort Knox Earnings. I'm John Ford here with Amnon Shashua, the um, founder and CEO of Mobileye. And you just reported earnings and uh, it was a beat, uh, better than expected. So I do want to go through that with you, but specify beforehand, um, several quarters ago, there had been an inventory issue that you guys have been working through last quarter, um, I believe was the first that it was clear that you were getting that behind you. And this continues that trend, it seems. Hello, John. Yes, 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 indeed. I think the inventory issue has been behind us for more than two quarters already. We already have also new measurements, uh, techniques in, in place to make sure that this thing does not happen again. So it's not, we are relying more than just what the tier ones uh, tell us. We have all sorts of other uh, other sources of information to, uh, to compare and, and make sure that our customers are not building inventory without us knowing. And I think it, it's really behind us. And uh, the growth that we are experiencing right now, more than 15% year on year, is, is really a testament to the strength of the business. Even though, you know, global production you know, Western global production is, is slightly decreasing. Our shipment of uh, of our technology, of our IQ chip, IQ uh, chips are are increasing. It feels to me like we're in this in between time where um, ADAS, the driver assist, is gaining share in cars on the one hand, but then we're also looking ahead to the possibility of a lot more. Uh, autonomy in driving in the future, but all of the rules and regulations in every country, every geography haven't been worked out. How would you characterize the period that we're in right now, industry-wise, and how much uh, current demand versus uh, future possibilities is what's really driving the growth possibility? Well, I, I think that we're, we're at a cusp of an inflection. And inflection is not just autonomy. Inflection is in terms of content of driving a system in a vehicle. There is a clear shift towards systems which, which today are just front-facing cameras, sometimes also a front-facing uh, radar to fuse with, with, with the camera to uh, multiple multi-camera systems, multiple multi-camera and radar uh, systems. Um, there is a, a very strong trend, both from regulatory bodies to um, to push the envelope of the requirements from from driving assist, and also there is demand from customers for hands off uh, features, but trying to do that with really cost effective uh, systems, and there is a sweet spot. The sweet spot is take about six cameras in a car, front facing, rear facing, and the four parking uh, cameras, add to it either a front facing radar or also with corner uh, radars depending on the trim level. And, and the cost of that is, is becoming very reasonable. And it's pushing the industry towards moving from just front-facing camera systems to multiple camera systems. And this is before the autonomous um, you know, uh, uh, revolution uh, comes to play. In terms of autonomous uh, revolution, there is, there, there is this product in between called the Level 2 Plus or you know, FSD uh, supervised or whatever you want to call it, where, where the driver is really responsible and needs to be alert. And there is a driver monitoring system, a camera watching the driver, making sure that your face is towards the road, your eyes are, are on the road. Um, this is an interim stage. The final stage is Level 3 systems, which we call chauffeur. Uh, we have a start of production with Audi, middle of uh, 2027, to allow 130 kilometers per hour driving, autonomous lane changing, uh, on ramp, off ramp, uh, autonomous uh, from highway to uh, to highway. This is a true. Uh, th this is a true revolution because you are buying back time. It's not just comfort. You can do something else legally. Do something else in the car, and the only question is is whether it can be done whether it's, it can be done at scale, uh, because we're not talking about the geofenced area. We're talking about all highways of, in, in the US or all highways in, in, in Europe. The question is whether it can be done once at, at a reasonable cost. And one that, once that has been proven, then the sky is the limit, because this is a true revolution in terms of um, the driving experience. Then there's the robotaxi, which is now becoming 
uh, much more accelerated than before. So a few years ago, it was still considered a science project, but Waymo's uh, success, especially taking significant market share in ride hailing, say in San Francisco, 25% uh, of ride hailing in San Francisco is, is Waymo's vehicles, even though the price per mile is not lower than normal ride hailing, even though the, the commute time is not faster, it's actually slower. There is something very convenient in going into a car where you're alone in the car and there's no other human there. Um, so this this is creating now a new new type of um, of expectation that robot taxis are are really around the corner in terms of robot taxis at scale. So, we, yeah, uh, uh, a looming presence in uh, certainly investors' minds, perhaps more than uh, technical folks, is Tesla just reported yesterday, um, the results on paper were disappointing. And part of that disappointment was um, the vehicle sales, which many, I think, would embrace the fact that uh, Elon Musk's reputation is having some impact on vehicle sales. Now, at the same time, Tesla's making promises about many of the things that we've been talking about, robo-taxi rollout, et cetera. What, has, what impact has uh, Tesla and the, the recent shifts around uh, consumer sentiment uh, ha had on um, the industry, the way Mobileye sees it? Well, I, th there was one positive thing that I, that I saw at uh, Tesla's uh, earnings is that the penetration rate of FSD has grown. It's now about 25% and it's growing because 50% of uh, customers have not even tested the, the, the FSD. So I think this this is positive. It means that there is customer demand for uh, these kinds of systems, and and they're willing to pay for it. I think this is this is a very positive uh, signal uh, regarding uh, you know Tesla's uh, robo taxi. You know I, I wish them the best. Uh, if if they succeed, it's good. It will drive demand, and uh, it will be good for everyone. Your initial approach to to robo taxi, or at least through partners, it seems like. Part of this is going to be uh, shared transportation, multiple people, VW with an ID buzz. You can fit more than a couple of people in there. What role do you think those different modes of transportation, shared transportation versus ordinary cars are going to have in the adoption of robo taxis? Well, we, we, I, for shared transportation, there isn't much statistics. Uh, so it's hard to tell. But for uh, um, single person transportation, we see significant traction. As I said, with Waymo, 25% market share in San Francisco. So regardless whether it's shared or single, you know, the ID buzz as a platform would be very good for, uh, for ride hailing. The cost of the system is, is very optimized. So it will allow for scale. The fact that we have uh, our system already installed in the production line reduces capex, reduces, increases scalability. The fact that there is also Moya as an operator, we have deals also with uh, with Uber and and Lyft. So it's all built for scale. Once once you show that you are there in terms of the safety and precision, then it's all about how fast can you scale and and the way that we approach this business where we're not fully vertically integrated. Uh, we have partners. We have the the, the vehicle uh, production that integrates our system into production line. There is an operator, Moya, uh, Marubeni that we are working with. There are customer facing or or demand uh, generators like Uber and and Lyft. And when you put every all of this together, and every partner has skin in the game, it will accelerate scalability. And scalability would be the name of the game starting from 2027. What's it going to do for? the business model. There's some debate out there about um, Waymo's costs uh, on the vehicle side and how that will flow through to profitability versus, say, Tesla's if they're able to get uh, robo-taxi capability off the ground. How do you view the technology that Mobileye is enabling um, as playing in that cost and then ultimately profitability calculation? Well, the cost of our system is, is, is very lean. We're talking about cameras that don't cost much. Um, the electronics with our IQ chips, you know, thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars doesn't cost much. Imaging radars, five of them that we produce, 
you know, it's hundreds of dollars and a few, a few ladders that are also very reasonably uh, cost. So the difference between Waymo and us is significant, but I believe also Waymo over the years, they'll come up with a next generation system with lower cost. I, I don't believe that they'll stay with a very high cost system that they have, that they have today. But the difference between our self-driving system cost and Tesla is, is really non-material. Right? Because when, when you look at the overall business case, when you remove a driver from the equation, you know, you're, you're saving tens of thousands of dollars uh, per car per year. So whether you have another $5,000 of the system cost is, is really uh, immaterial in, in that respect. Right now, there are concerns about overbuilding, uh, too much supply in EVs in China. My sense is that a lot of those cars have advanced capabilities built in. Is that an issue, whether it be for Mobileye specifically or for the industry? We were talking about inventory in the beginning. I wonder how much of the technology that's being sold into the industry is perhaps being sold into cars that aren't being driven. Well, I, I think what's happening in China, I, I don't see that replicated in the West. Uh, China's right, right now, the, the, the competitive landscape there is, uh, is, is, doesn't make sense even. So I believe that there's going to be a lot of consolidation uh, going forward. And also uh, government is, is playing a role there in, in, in China in terms of subsidy or not subsidy. And it will, it will play a role in, in consolidation. I think technology supply in the West is meeting demand. Uh, I, I don't see what was happening in China being spilled towards uh, the West. What are you seeing in the various uh, test trials that you've been running in Israel, elsewhere, um, the road tests for uh, more full self-driving, some of the chauffeur capabilities that you showcased uh, at Investor Day and how far those are from uh, being road ready and uh, eventually being regulatorily approved in the markets that matter most. Okay, so, so let's start with the chauffeur. Chauffeur is a level three, um, eyes off uh, driving on, on highways with Audi. Uh, there are certain homologation. Uh, for, first of all, the, the hardware is already production, production uh, ready. Uh, most of the software elements are there. Uh, homologations phases, some of them uh, have, already, uh, have already passed in, in terms of uh, Europe. Uh, Europe is much more complicated in terms of regulatory approvals than, than the U.S. U.S. is more self-certification. In Europe, you need to go through certain gates of uh, homologation. And already some of the gates have been, have been passed. Uh, we have test vehicles that we demonstrate to other uh, car makers to show the maturity of, uh, of the Level 3. So it's all on track in terms of the uh, mean time between failure statistics, uh, maturity of the technology, maturity of the, of, of the vehicle. So it's all on track for middle of 2027. In terms of uh, drive, drive is coming earlier. Middle 2026, we are removing the driver and starting commercial deployment in one city in, in the US together with the Volkswagen, ADMT and, and uh, Moya. And then early 2027, scaling to, uh, to multiple cities. There, there's also KPIs of uh, mean time between uh, failure. We are meeting all the all those KPIs, and we believe we will finish by end of this year to be ready. And then the first half of 2026 to build all the teleoperation infrastructure. Teleoperation is also an element that you need to put the, some careful thought into because it drives the, the, the economics of, of the entire operation. So we built a system in which through cloud computing, we can allow very fast scalability, starting from one teleoperator with per one car and quickly moving to one operator to X number of uh, cars using assistance of cloud uh, computing to, uh, to help the operator. So uh, that will be the first half of 2026. And then we'll start first city to deploy and then 2027 to scale. So 2027 is really an inflection year for, uh, for Mobileye both uh, the chauffeur and supervision second generation coming out with the Volkswagen uh, group and drive will start uh, generating revenue uh, early 2027. Finally, what's the status of the Intel relationship the way you see it? They still have a significant stake in Mobileye, but they also seem to uh, be in need of cash. 
um, and uh, looking to uh, sell off, monetize stakes in, in various companies. Uh, I believe they've been doing that a bit with Mobileye. Where do you see that settling out and to what degree is that relationship still helpful for Mobileye? I think we, we have a very good relationship with uh, with Intel. Uh, the Intel board members are very supportive, very uh, uh, very helpful. In terms of uh, um, liquidating their their assets, they've been doing this in a very responsible manner. The last time they sold shares was two years ago, uh, before the last uh, the last offering. Uh, last offering was only ten percent. They're still they have eighty percent uh, uh, equity on, in, in the company. So I believe there there will be more liquidation, but they will do it very carefully. They do see the upside value. You know, some of our competitors are worth more than one hundred billion dollars, and uh, with much less revenue that we have. So there is lots and lots of uh, potential going forward, and I believe that it will continue selling but in a very uh, uh careful and responsible manner all right and then i appreciate it um with the uh, earnings that uh, beat expectations um we look forward to uh seeing the technology continue to roll out as people anticipate just how much of an impact uh, culturally and financially self-driving is going to have appreciate it thank you